ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Bob Paisamente. <laughs> he looked like a cowboy. Dr. Bob. Thank you. I bring this down. Yeah. Yeah, that could change the whole story. I'm 53. 53 is an eight. An eight is all about communication. So. Okay. So I'm floating on a ball in space. I'm living in a miracle. And the miracle is born of love. Because whatever created the moon and the stars and the rivers and the children and the trees and the wildlife is something gorgeous. But the journey of my soul has been through the dark. I was yanked out of my mom, given a shot, stuck a piece of plastic in my mouth with cow's milk, put through a system, an educational system, and asked, what are you going to be when you grow up? <laughs> I'm Dr. Bob Pismenti, chiropractor. At this point in time, I call myself an unwinder. I look at people as water or as energy. I find where you're stuck. And I go there with my hands. And as I go there, as the person relaxes into what I do, they heal themselves. <laughs> Easy, right? So as a child, I loved nature, catching frogs and snakes. And uh, I loved my Catholic religion growing up. Um, I was an altar boy, and out of high school, I went to the seminary to consider, for a weekend, to consider being a priest. <laughs> What's so funny about <laughs> So three years later, I find myself driving through uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina towards Spartanburg, South Carolina, to a chiropractic college, Sherman College, and what brought me there was nature, uh, um, opposed to the other colleges. Not far from Myrtle Beach, either. <laughs> and uh, upon arriving, I uh, was uh, exposed to an eclectic student body, people who were uh, studying different philosophies and religions and gurus and vegetarian cafes uh, or vegetarianism and, uh, and exposed to the chiropractic philosophy that spoke of an innate intelligence that resides in all living things, that heals, that transforms two living cells into a liver cell or a heart cell or a skin cell and that can heal a cut and that can change a living uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich into living tissue. Uh, so the body is perfect. And, and um, after learning that, I really uh, found out, whoa, God is inside of me. And, and I went to church one time, and I, much to my mother's dismay, I, I never returned. Two months before I graduated chiropractic college, a husband and wife team from Dublin, Ireland wrote to the college and they were looking for someone to take over for her while on maternity leave. So I jumped at the opportunity, um, sent in my resume, which they accepted, and my wife and I at the time, who I married in my last year of chiropractic college, off we went for a grand adventure. Arrived in Dublin and two weeks later, I'm working on 40 to 50 p patients a day. And I became really good with my hands. And, uh, that was a blast, listening to that Irish brogue, which was really, you had to really listen close. Um, and also to learn there were only 12 chiropractors in all of Ireland. So they found out about me, and after a year stint in Dublin, uh, off I went to Sligo, Ireland, off the west side of the state, and then to Galway, and then I spent time in a healing center off the Dingle Peninsula on a strand called Inch, surrounded by... Um, the ocean, and that was an amazing experience learning different healing techniques. Um, and then from there, nature brought me to the hills of Dunmanway, Cork. I was in the middle of nowhere, hanging out with English gypsies and uh, farmers. I felt like Percival from the King Arthur stories. I was riding horses, chasing rainbows, making good money, and hanging out in the pubs. I had found the Holy Grail. <laughs> but my wife at the time wasn't having such a grand time, and she came home. I planned on staying there the rest of my life, but I did come home at Christmas time and to see my family and all, and upon my return to Ireland, I had a hard time getting back into the country. They 
wanted to know my, where my green card was. And, and other things happened. My sign wasn't put in, and, um, and my phone wasn't on. So you know, I was wise enough to see the signs. And, and uh, I forgot to tell this part of the story. I had a prayer to the creator on my way to chiropractic college that I would always help humanity no matter what, whether they could afford me or not, if, they, if he helped me get through. <clears throat> And if I would have stayed in Ireland, I'm sure I'd still be uh, hanging out in the pub singing Old Danny Boy. <laughs> so uh, the, uh, I return home, and I practice in Ferndale and Pleasant Ridge, Royal Oak, and not having a very good time. In Ireland, it was a straight cash practice. Here it was x-rays and a lot of paperwork and insurance, and you know, it just wasn't working for me. So I started putting in fish ponds for people while still practicing at the same time. <laughs> And uh, I meet my next wife, Anita. And um, we uh, start going to these rainbow gatherings together. And the rainbow gathering is a gathering of 10 to 20,000 people in a national forest. Everybody's sleeping in tents and teepees. And there's no money exchanged. And the Krishnas are there, and the Krishna Christians are there, and the Hawaiians are there, and the Muslims are there, and the Kitty Village is there. And, there's drumming and dancing, no, no uh, anything electric, and everything's vegetarian, and no alcohol, and, and, and it's like playing heaven on earth. The uh, rainbow gathering revolves around the 4th of July, and on the 4th of July, there's a silent vigil, and everybody goes down to the main circle, and there there's a big peace pole, and Incense is burned, and everybody's in silence. And to be with that many people is quite profound in silence. And then at 12 midnight, or 12 noon, they blow the conch shells. And the children from Children Village come on down, and they come into the main circle. And there's a big hooray in the crowd and, and that we came together again for peace. And then again, there's a silence. And there's a big ohm circle. And again, to, to own with 10 to 20,000 people, that is, is, is wow. And, and twice it happened. Soon after the ohm, a rainbow appeared right around the sun. And later on, in another circle, here come you know, rainbows, right? So it's perfect confirmation to me that, yes, this is what we humans are supposed to do. You know, love one another, love the Mother Earth, you know, love the children, you know, no brainer. So I've got gypsy in my blood at this point in time, and I, I come home with Anita, and I'm, I'm ready to go on the rainbow road. I just want to practice chiropractic on the rainbow road. I want to trust life that it'll take care of me, and uh, you know, I, I'm ready to go. And felt it was the best thing I could do for humanity. But she wasn't interested. She was older and wiser than me and thought we should stay home and take care of the children. We had two together, and, and she came with one herself. So that relationship lasted about five years, and. Um, we, we broke it off, and I was quite hurt, quite devastated, not being with my children, and my, I never planned on getting a, another divorce. And, and um, I had an opportunity, uh, a place came up in Ferndale, and, and I started a vegetarian cafe there. And um, we, uh, kind of a health food and, and hemp clothing, different natural products, and lost that in a year, lost everything, lost all my money, you know. So here I am, down and out, and always feeling like I was trying to do the will of the Creator and, and completely lost. And I had a prayer to put me through whatever it takes to wake me up. Yeah. <laughs> Soon after, I meet wife number three. <laughs> Sarah. And she came with two children, and we had two together. And we had this amazing, magnificent uh, wedding. And at the end of the, the ceremony, we rode off on a single horse together. So I'm inspired. I'm rocking. We're living in Detroit. I always wanted a healing center. I thought it would be up north somewhere where people could convalesce. But a uh, place was available on Woodward between six and seven mile. And everybody thought that I was crazy. It was pretty bad, pretty dilapidated. And, and uh, you know how streets in Detroit are? You got some good neighborhoods, some bad. We were in, in a decent area on six, near Six Mile. And uh, um, so I get the place. And I'm on fire. I'm inspired. I'm, I'm passionate. And uh, taking part, part of the place, no money. But uh, I'm, I'm still ready to go. I have the vision. And the addicts start showing up out of the woodwork, right? <laughs> the crack and the heroin. And I'm this kind of naive white kid. And um, 
you know, and I had a hard time, okay, here I am building this healing center on crack. You know, <laughs> they were willing to come and do their, their time for $20, and I would have a conversation about, with them about maybe we should do something else, but they were going to do what they were going to do. And, and one time I had one of them blow it in my face. I wanted to smell it, you know? And it smelled like death. Yeah. And a few things happened. My violin was stolen, and you know, I, I'm this giving guy, and, and uh, I think the people who were stealing from me were the people right with me. And anyways, I pulled the place together. And, and there was a little, I didn't know what it was gonna look like. I knew I was gonna practice chiropractic there. That's all I knew. But there was a little kitchen there. We, we turned into a juice bar, which eventually turned into a full-fledged cafe. So here it is, perfect dream. Wife and I, children, and she wants out. Can you imagine? So. <laughs> so there I am, sleeping at the center all by myself, no children, you know, completely heartbroken, um, not wanting to practice anymore, not giving a darn about anything, and uh, my friends start showing up of the rainbow, Persuasion, Tommy Spaghetti, accordion player, <laughs> Ricardo Trevino, storyteller, Franco Buzelli, Frank, uh, famous hairdresser and palm reader, and David Olson, a good carpenter. So, yeah, so the party's starting, right? We're smoking grass, having a good old time, <laughs> getting the cafe going. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, stoned and devastated at the same time. <clears throat> but people start coming. Now, we're just having a blast. The people start coming. And, and more and more. And we start this drum circle, which started every Wednesday night. And it got so big, up to 300 people were showing up. Drummers and hula hoopers and fire throwers and, and uh, storytellers and complete spontaneity, bagpipes and magic, right? And, and I had these vibrational healing bowls, and we would have a, an ohm and a silence and a meditation, exposing all these kids to, to, you know, to the drums and, and earthiness, and we would light fire outside. And uh, it, it just built and, and was strong. And, and the idea be, behind going to the rainbow circle is to bring the rainbow home with you. It's not about you know, to bring it into your own environment. And, and I had brought the rainbow home. And, um, and it, it built, and alcohol started coming, and fights breaking out, but I figured everybody had their own process, and <laughs> so, yeah, naive Dr. Bob. Somebody throws a bottle, next thing you know, I'm being sued for a million dollars, you know, yeah. <laughs> Happened in the alleyway, that went away, it cost me a little bit of money, but... Uh, but through all these trials and tribulations, I, I start really having these awakenings and, and back to this, we're floating on a ball in space thing. You know, that, that we're living in a miracle and that all we are is a speck in this universe. All I am is a speck. All I am is vibration. All I am is the breath of creator, breath of God, the breath of love, the breath of Jehovah, the breath of Krishna. In this present moment, as I breathe, it's not just oxygen moving through me. It's the breath of life. And that when we come into the present moment, then it's not even me anymore. Now I'm an expression of the creation moving through me. And that's what I try to do with people who come in to see me. Everybody who comes in to see me, I tell them, yeah, there's nothing wrong with you. Life is just speaking to you. So when we have headache, asthma, and allergies, or... Or, or, or emotional issues, it's, it's life saying, hey, you're out of balance, not what we've been taught. Something is wrong with you and we need it, right? So, so, and this is such a, I cannot tell you how important this opportunity is for me because I've always felt the media should be used to, to talk about these beautiful opportunities, this beautiful stuff. If, if the creator came, Christ came, and to have a microphone to speak to the planet and say, hey, and, and, and what are we getting on the news? It's, wow, right? Bad. So, we change our reality. That, that's one reality that I'm not interested in, right? And, and, right. 
When 9-11 happened, you could turn on one radio station, it's 9-11, most of the radio station. Some there was laughter, some there was music. So I realized, you know, I'm going to tune into my own station. And my station is I'm already here in heaven, even though we've created hell here. But ultimately, we're in a heavenly planet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So, wow, so I mean, I'm 53, my, my astrological chart, my, my numerology is all about eights, and here I am, I'm 17th. And so, so, from here, I'm going big, according to my, uh, so, anyway, so, back at the ranch, you know, and I, so I had that prayer to put me through whatever it takes, and not all of us have to experience that, and, and, and I couldn't say to somebody in prison, who's some, especially somebody who's there, you know, who shouldn't be there. Hey, we're living in a miracle. We're already in heaven, you know? So, right. So, you know. Hmm. So at the drum circle, I met my fourth wife. <laughs> Tashima. <laughs> and we're still together. And we found a house down the street from the center I can walk to work that we bought for $1,400. Perfect gift from the creator. It smelled good, clean. Um, we did have to do electric and plumbing, and we bought all these lots around us, and we're trying to do an urban farm. So support urban farming in Detroit. I had pigs and peacocks and goats and chickens, and, and the city came and took them all from me. Five cop cars. I'm laying on the ground saying, you guys know what you're doing is wrong. Yep. I think we were disturbing the crack houses around or something, but you know, <clears throat> we've, got, we've got alarms going off in our cars, and we got all this stuff, and then people get upset because of a crow of a rooster? Yeah. Perfect confirmation. It's, it's like the creator. It's, there's no sound like the, the crow of a rooster. And you know, it's like, wake up. It's time to get up. Yeah. So we fall in love. Tashima comes with four children, and we have two together. And, uh, She's part of the healing center. Yeah. And I'm now, I'm, I'm Robert, I'm Bob, I'm Robert in the hood. Uh, yeah. My children saw this hat and said, Dad, you got to get that hat. And so I kind of said, okay, uh, Robert in the hood. Is there something more? Okay, anyways, great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.